Listen to the best wrestling podcast in the world. Journey into Wrestling every other Wednesday on the Journey into Comics Network. The following, the following. Is a journey into comics. Journey into comics. A journey into comics. A journey into comics. Journey into comics. Journey into comics. Network. 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 Production. Production. You're listening to Poor Entertainment with your host, ladies and gentlemen. Please welcome Andrew Poor. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, Andrew Poor, and this is Pod. Wait, this I'm not Andrew Poor. This isn't Podcastrophe. Um, wait a minute. This is this is poor entertainment. What is going on? What is going on? Oh, whoa, AP, there you are. What is going on? Like, why, why I, am I hosting your show? Wait, I don't am know. Am I hosting your show? What's I, I don't know what's happening. I feel like I need to give everyone a fistful of heritage all of a sudden. I, oh, I, speaking of, <laughs> I got a fistful of anti-hero. Oh, my ah. Now I feel like the, the basic bitch drinking Miller Lite. <laughs> I got some of those in the fridge. Oh, wait, those are zombie dust. It's a step up. Uh, no. <laughs> The running joke here in town is that um, actually I don't I, I'm not sure how to explain the joke, but we call we call zombie dust Miller lights. Oh gosh, <laughs> I, I can't remember why. Uh, I, I feel like we could use some help here. Is anyone else out there that can help us out with this situation? I don't know what's going yeah, on. Yeah, no kidding. Whoa, whoa, oh, whoa! Oh shit, whoa. it's Pod Daddy. Breached in, guys from Earth Thirty Eight. I was smoking a doobie with Snoop. And it was a good time, but something is strange. First of all, Dick, why are you, why are you hosting this show? I'm, am I? I you, that's what I'm trying to figure out. Like, am I hosting I, the show? Am I not? Like, what's going on here? I, but I see, I see House Castrophe, and I see AP. I'm very confused. Yeah, I don't know why I'm in a basement right now. It's, it's, this, this doesn't look like where, where I live. I don't know. I feel like we should get to the bottom of this confusion. This is odd. This is, is odd. What? It's almost as if we've traveled to Elseworlds. Oh. Else, that's a good word for it. That... Yeah. Great segue, Nate. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Yes. This this week we are covering a show or a series of shows that we all enjoy, at least most of them. This is covering the CW Elseworlds crossover, their annual crossover that this one does not feature Legends of Tomorrow because it would have just been more balls to the wall if it was. Oh, I don't even know how it would have fit into this. (laughs) I mean, they they squeezed a Gary, and that's the best they could do. Yeah, yeah. And that was fine. Okay with. Completely okay with. Yeah, we try like... Oh, go ahead, Dick. Oh, we try to do this crossover talk, like, every crossover. Uh, Did we we talk last year about it? About uh, Uh, Crisis? I didn't. Did Nate and I? Remember. Did we I cover Crisis? I don't think we did. I don't know. I don't, I don't think I talked about Crisis. I don't know if I talked about it with anyone, though. I've slept a lot since then. A lot has happened in 2018. I... It truly has. It yeah, truly I has. mean, to talk about how... Just to brief on your other show, AP, I just want to make reference to a really funny quote I heard this week that was, um, last week was a bad year for Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's, uh, that was an SNL joke, and I thought it was actually pretty clever. So anyways, uh, yeah, we have to do some talking about uh, the CW crossover. It's really funny, guys, because I'm not caught up at all. I jump <laughs> balls deep into this, and they're genuinely are characters. I have no fucking idea who where, they are. Where are you at in terms of the – where were you left? Have you watched any of the certain seasons of the shows? or? Okay, so the last things I've witnessed was the entire previous season of Supergirl. I think it was three, season three. Okay. I finished that. I finished Flash of season uh, four. I did not finish last season's Arrow because I did not start <clears throat> last season's Arrow. I watched the crossover, and that was pretty much it. So you got a lot of spoilers in this. I kind Maybe of. if I can remember them all. There was a lot of things, and I can also in my head go, well, that was also the monitor playing with 
uh, how things were supposed to go down a little bit. You know, I don't know what's real and what's you not. You know, I don't think it was too spoilery, if I if I, think, I recall. Those are meant to be, I don't know, not to jump in. They're kind of meant to be kind of standalone. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, totally. You know, I think only Oliver mentions a few things, like him being in prison and such. That's it. Like, right. and the 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 interaction between him and Felicity uh within the episode that that's kind of a a spoiler within Arrow but <clears throat> everything else is pretty it, it's pretty spoiler free you know like right. Flash didn't have anything <laughs> right I mean they didn't even I feature have, like their I have main no idea about Supergirl because I don't watch Supergirl <laughs> right Supergirl was pretty mild too like it just it talked about like the most recent episode about like the events about them wanting to the government wants her to go public with who she is as a person, like her real identity. And that was like, that was the last big thing. And they brought that up when she was talking with, uh, with Clark. But yeah, I think before yeah. we really get into like the meat of this, we just talk about some of the, the fun Easter eggs that we kind of got leading up to the release. I don't know if any of you guys watched the trailers. No, for, I didn't. Cause we know they kind of, there was a, there's a trailer that, um, I think it kicked off the first episode that featured a favorite 90s superhero. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and the awesome return of uh, Barry Allen as played by John Wesley Shipp yep. like, from from the old school days. Yeah. Looking like the old school costume. Yeah, getting... He didn't... I don't know what really happened to him. Like, that's kind of a... Thing. So are we talking about all the Easter eggs right now? All the well, different let's things just we gonna... saw throughout the episodes? Well, this was just like that was the only that really showed up in like the previews. We can get into the Easter eggs, but you just watched all these episodes today. Like you binged these within the last like hour and a half. It was like a literal two and a half hour movie that I just sat through, and it was worth it. Yeah. It was good. So I guess since it's the most fresh in your mind, do you want to? You're the. I feel like you're. I always hear you recap some of the stuff you've watched or seen. So do you want to run us through those since you've seen it more recently mm-hmm. than both of us? I'll do it lightning fast, kind of like The Flash. So in short, in The Flash episode, Oliver Queen wakes up in Barry Allen's bed, and he's like, what the fuck? I'm not Barry Allen. Yeah. I'm supposed to be Oliver Queen. This is weird. Iris, don't touch me. This is awkward. I, I, Barry will be very mad at me. He'll, he might phase my heart out of my body. I don't know. Like, what the shit? <laughs> so then they go to Team Flash, and they're like, hey, we got a problem. And they think these two are imposters and they're crazy. Let's knock them out. Let's figure this shit out. But somewhere in Iris's heart, she is just deep down realizing that there's this possibility. And I also should mention in the episode, there's a little side story. I think it maybe actually is what starts the episode where this guy, we learn John Deegan, uh, is handed a book and told that he can make changes to the, uh, to the world. And you aren't really given much more than that. A guy does, it just kind of disappears. And uh, so then Team Flash is got Barry and Oliver, which is the reverse, uh, tied up. Because Oliver, or, this is awkward to talk about, by the way, because it's like, <laughs> which of the versions of which am right. I talking about? Yeah. So the Flash Oliver, I guess, had to run to, to Star City to pick up uh, Barry Allen Green Arrow. This is... Again, very right. hardcore to do, but um, <laughs> and then they get again taken out by uh, the team and put in the um, the cell lock that they have for the metas. And the next thing we know, Iris kind of has a change of heart, realizes that maybe something is a foul. Barry and Oliver, or Oliver and Barry, however you want to look at it, they break out of the holding cell, and Iris lets them go. To find Kara Danvers on Earth 38. Tell and him she's your tell lightning you. rod. Oh, man. It was interesting because he gave, like, I guess this is funny to say, Barry gave Oliver the wrong advice for Barry. And what I mean by that is, in that moment, he should have talked to her. It's ultimately what fixes it, is when Barry talked to Iris. So in the beginning, when he's like, no, you do it. It's like, no, dumbass, you're the one that's in love with her. Like... Speak from your heart, man. There's things that only you and her will know personally. Like, bring up some time you guys got freaky, something that she'll never forget. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, just be like, just like get raunchy with it if you have to. Hey, she'll remember. She'll be like, whoa, he's you too know? fast. He's too. Fast. Oh, so yeah. she doesn't really see the action happening. Oh god. Or does she? Is it not very quick? Is it? Is it like one second? Because he's so quick. 
It's like, and I'm and done. It, and, and is it like actually a sex act? Is he phasing into her? How's that work? Oh, oh God. Hey, Too Nate, much. Go, go ahead and keep recapping uh, Daenerys Palin. Okay, Daenerys Palin. I totally <laughs> vibe that. AP, let's take over for a hot second here. So back to it, what happens is uh, they go to Smallville. Well, it, it flashes to Smallville where Kara is, and oh. she's with... Uh, obviously Clark and Lois Lane. Holy shit balls! We get Lois Lane, which was wicked. Um, yeah. Now they're doing their own kind of thing, and it seems like they're cleaning up the Kent farm, which was also a neat uh, reference point to see in the CW verse. Again, kind of playing. A, there's so many moments in this three part episode that harken back to things that are not just CW directly related and such. Right. Crossovers are ultimately talking, fan service, really. It was the this was maybe, and when Dick comes back, we can really dive into this part of it. But like, I, I did want to get into how this was maybe the most fan service episode we've ever gotten from CW, right? Or three parter episode, anyways. You know, it feels like one episode to me because I just watched it all simultaneously. It's like but, one uh, big movie. So they're at the Clark that they're they're at Kent Farm, and all of a sudden, boom! Breach in Oliver and Barry. Bolivar and Airy, or whatever you're going to call them. Bolivar and uh, they're like, Kara immediately knows something's up. She's like, hey, what's up, guys? And they're like, this is what's going on. You recognize us? Whoa, this is crazy. Like, we got to get to the bottom of this. What's happening? So then they go back to Earth, and they have to defeat an, an awesome DC villain. So stoked for them to bring it into the world. Amazo. A character who's a robot who can absorb any superpower thrown at him if given enough time, and then he can become as powerful as said character. That's a little overkill. Had to find a way to nerf him. I think they did a good job mm -hmm. with that battle or whatever. And, and Again, diving deeper here. Um, they do defeat him, but then they realize that there's more problems, and it's like, how are we going to fix this? And Oliver's great answer is, let's go to Gotham. And we got the tease at that first episode of Batwoman standing atop of a tower. We don't know it's Batwoman yet. We really aren't supposed to know shit all, but I know, you know, obviously, and you guys know. So she's atop the tower looking all stoic and whatnot. Awesomely and filled in Chicago. Cool, Legitly. yeah. Yeah. And I, uh, you know, honestly, I was a little bit frustrated because I stayed for what I thought was going to be one of those, like, clips that they do, like the little after credit sequences, and there was not one on the first episode. And I was like, I wasted like two minutes. I could have just been getting closer right. to the end of this. you know. So anyways, jump forward. And then the second episode, we go to Gotham. And mm -hmm. we spend the majority of that episode in Gotham with the team trying to figure it out, trying to figure out what to do. They, you know, they ultimately get uh, arrested by the GCPD because Oliver is a known apparent fugitive, or B Bolivar. Um, I don't know if you'd call him Aerie. I'm not sure which one he is, but uh, anyways, he's a fugitive. He gets locked away in GCPD. Somebody posts bail. He's not sure who. It's Katie Kane. She brings him to Wayne Tower at Wayne Enterprises. They're a little confused. She reveals that it's that Bruce is her cousin and that he's been gone for a while because after Batman left the city, it, it kind of went to shit he had to get out of town too because it was just too dangerous or whatever and he's trying to find his shit or whatever. One of my favorite parts in this and and we'll really, really dive into it, but they had a great fight sequence in this second episode. Oliver Queen versus Barry Allen in each other's outfits, but they were fighting Malcolm Merlin and the reverse Flash thanks to you guys. Scarecrow. The fucking Scarecrow. Yeah. How amazing was that? To all have the, his, all oh my little God. things. You got to nerd, got to nerd out on some Gotham during that episode. Yeah, we did. Yeah, oh, we I was did. nerding out hardcore parkour. Definitely, there were so many. There was things also I saw. A, a unthawed woman. Yeah, Nora in that episode. Freeze, maybe, maybe, maybe. Nora but Freeze. It's, yeah, I mean it's a. Uh, so so they had they had a little bit of a run in with. I can't remember who caused all the drama. Oh, oh, it was Deegan. They were going to find him because yeah. he's in Gotham. Because he was a Arkham professor or scientist. Doctor. He's a doctor. Yeah. He's an Arkham doctor. And they go there, and ultimately he, like, runs off, but he hits an escape button for him because it lets out all the inmates. 
unfortunately, because of how they have rights and stuff, I'm sure they can only reference these characters. We weren't, I wasn't at least expecting to ever see any of those names in full form. Yeah, it on showed the like a lot of nice names. I saw Cobblepot, Nigma. They showed, yeah. I think, pretty much every, like all the big ones. Well, and Mark I Guggenheim. <laughs> yeah, Mark Guggenheim was one. Pamela Isley, who is um, Poison Ivy. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Boris Carlo, who is Clayface. Ed Nigma, Cobblepot. Uh, I mean, that was just a, like a just a like I hate to use this term because we're not on podcast or free, but I guess it's a crossover, so we got to get a little bit of everything in here. But like, hey, it was, hey, it was hey, a little bit of a jizz factory in that regard. Like, there was so much to just be like, oh my god, Nate, they gave us cobble pot. Oh Nate, my god, they we gave have us never said like, jizz factory on the show. Are you sure? I'm fairly certain. Let's go we to can the make tapes. It happen. Let's go. We can make it happen because okay. that sounds like something we would say. <laughs> But just we have casually drop it tomorrow during the during your live. Just just if he remembers, he probably it. will. And then it's really a crossover, you know. I'm gonna write that down right now for my podcast trophy notes. Just draw it <laughs> on the map. Go. Just draw. a trod on the map. That's hilarious in Sharpie. Just draw a box. Jizz factory. Jizz factory. I love it. Oh, <laughs> oh man. Uh, so back to it, we get, um, you know, ultimately the resolve is Katie Kane helps them realize that they've been poisoned by Crane's shit and uh, kind of undoes everything. And she's like, you guys can, you know, keep working on things, get things figured out. You know, Deegan uh, kind of <clears throat> gets screwed up because the monitor, sh- the, yeah, the monitor shows up, not anti-monitor. I got to remember not to screw that up because anti-monitor is also a character in the DC <laughs> So and mm-hmm. so the monitor shows up. He's like, "Dude, I gave you this book, and you were supposed to just wreak fucking havoc. Be Thanos, man. Why can't Bruh. you be like Thanos? Bruh, just do the thing, man. Do more. Just do the thing. You know, do just more. Do Go to do the better. Extreme. Do better. So like, right as everything is getting ready to pop off, and they're getting ready to um, move to the next phase of the plan." They are once again rewritten in history, and then Oliver and Barry become the Trigger Twins. Throwback. And, yeah, and then that's the episode, and we're kind of like, oh, what? no, come on. Then we get to the third episode, which was a Supergirl episode, and that episode really moved fast, and you had to kind of expect that it was going to be all of your resolve, so it was going to be your really big payoff, I think. I think that's really why they went to Gotham in the second episode of this, because it would have been very unbalanced if Arrow did not have some significance with right. the kind of story they were telling. Yeah, If it was underwhelming in any way, it kind of would have been forgettable. But putting Gotham at the forefront, giving us Kate Kane, giving us Batwoman, you know, Supergirl realizing the truth, them kind of almost being Clark and Bruce, but not really. like Yeah, you know. yeah. X-ray vision. So, Oh, yeah, yeah. she's like uh, way more tattoos than I was expecting. And then, of course, my brain, sorry, world, I went to Orange is the New Black Ruby Riot, yeah, and yeah. I was like, oh, there was some Supergirl. He just called her yes. Ruby Riot. <laughs> there, yeah, <laughs> Ruby Rose, damn it. You were talking about her yesterday. Yeah, yeah, I was actually. Crazy. Don't well, think I wasn't listening to that JIW on stage that I didn't really care about. I appreciate you, man. That's crazy. By the way, side note, it's been wild to kind of have Dick and I cross over and take over the network anyways this week, as in yesterday's episode. Today, as we're recording it, Journey into Comics 222 came out. We were on stage with Veronica and Brian K. Morris. It was a great time. Um, doing LafiCon was a blast, but just to to continuously be podcasting this week with Dick has been extra fun for me, and, and we don't get to do this often, bro. No, we don't. I had a mouthful of taco. Yeah, that was fucking hilarious. I, was I got laughing. me some. I got me some steak tacos. There are some moments that happened yesterday <laughs> when I was editing and getting everything across the network ready. There were a few moments that I was listening back to that literally had me in tears, laughing. Just yeah. <laughs> different moments that happened when we were playing Dungeons with Dudes, which you guys will be able to watch now on Facebook, but it isn't going to premiere on the network live until the first weekend of January, and you guys will be listening to that bi-weekly on Sundays. Spoiler alert! But it's live now; it's official. We can talk about it. But, Ooh. anyways, back to it. The third episode sees essentially the Trigger Twins are the worst criminals of the worst, and everybody's after them in Central City. And who's the hero of the story but 
black Superman, and I and and, and I'm not not African American Superman. I don't want people to be crossed. I mean black suit Superman. <laughs> you mean Michael for, B. Jordan? No, don't say. I mean he would be a fantastic Superman. That's a whole other. He'd be I. Like, I don't. I, I think he would like do. That. I would, but that's a different reason. Anyway, I love I love Michael B. Jordan, but nah, I'm good. I, I still have not yet listened to the Creed 2 review, by the way, because I need to see the movie first. I really you do. You absolutely do. Get Fair on with here. the shit. Okay, so back to it. The mon- <laughs> uh, the uh, Deegan or whatever, Dugan, Dum Dum Dugan, whatever the hell that Jim, Jimmy Dugan, whatever his <laughs> name is. Oh, my God. Dum <laughs> Dum Dugan. Why? He, uh, why are you like this? <laughs> Because <laughs> my brain is filled with shit. It's true. <laughs> like, don't you listen to the show? Fill your brains with shit. It happens uh, every single week. Cheap plug. Oh, yeah. Anyway, so Dugan guy, Deegan, decides that he's going to be Superman of this universe and sets everything afoul and essentially does a, a different kind of snapping where he just randomizes everybody and no one is really where they should be. It's fun to see Caitlyn and and uh, Diggle being kind of like his um, his cronies and doing whatever he says. Alex Danvers there as well and really plays a key and prominent role in moving the story forward on in this episode. Uh, the Trigger Twins ultimately have a meeting with the Monitor and the Monitor sets some shit straight and he goes, "Look, you guys are persistent. You don't give up. I appreciate that, but I have seen your destinies. I know what's coming." And you can't change it. And there's something much worse than what you're dealing with now on its way soon. It's coming. A crisis. They definitely use that word a lot throughout this year's crossover. Crisis. 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 At least twice in each episode that word is dropped. So Mm -hmm. no real surprise to see what we get at the end of this episode. We'll get back into it, though. Uh, They have to figure it out. And they kind of have a plan on how they're going to defeat the Superman of this universe and they do this thing where Kara and Barry run and fly at Mach 7 to slow the Earth down. And there's a dramatic turn of events, and Superman is fighting Superman, and that's epic and huge and whatnot. Uh, but Lois Lane, uh, Biz- uh, Brainiac, I think, is who that was supposed to be? Yeah, that's Brainiac is- 7. Okay, okay. Is he a good guy? Yeah, he works for the okay. DEO and Supergirl. Okay, and then obviously Martian Manhunter show up. We get- we're getting close to a Justice League. Uh huh. We are very dangerously close to having all the members that we need to have. I'm just saying. Uh, they help quell Deegan, get the book away from him, slow down time because Oliver Queen has made a deal, which we don't know what the deal was yet mm-hmm. officially, but he has made some sort of deal with the Monitor. We're led to believe that that is the case. Especially, I want to call back to a line early on when the revelation of Oliver having lied to Barry. Iris and and Oliver Berry were talking, and she's like, "Yeah, Felicity called me, and Oliver cut a deal behind, behind, behind her back, and you know, he didn't, even, she didn't even know it was coming or whatever, and they just showed up and took him away one day. Like, mm-hmm. it's in that moment that you realize that he's going to have to do a drastic choice and not tell somebody something important again, and then this is it with the monitor. He keeps that to himself. No, Barry, I didn't make a deal. You guys just changed your fate." It it had nothing to do with me, and that's a bull face lie. I could see mm-hmm. it all over the Oliver Queen, you know, facade. So they set shit right. He uses the arrow to shoot the book, and it blows everything back into the right way. And also mention he brings back a Mazo for one final battle, which is pretty cool, just to kind of get a little bit extra in there. I did like Gary as the bartender of the, <laughs> and and oh, also you got to mention Cisco Ramon having a big role in this plot. Uh, setting up the, uh, you know, he's the gangster. He has all the money. He's like he breached the top. into all the banks and stole yeah, it. Yeah, because he still has the ability to breach, which is strange. Why would you? I guess because he didn't know Cisco was important is why Very Cisco true. still had his powers. You know. Very so, true. He got. He also had uh, Superman's worst friend. Yeah, yeah, uh, James Olsen. Mm-hmm. I'm Superman's worst friend. He's like. <laughs> biker guy uh this episode was chock full of cool stuff man and then you know ultimately like i said they have the resolve they get everything set right but batwoman says and i want you guys to tell me what you think about this because i didn't really get it batwoman calls them up calls oliver up and is like hey uh deegan met a, a dude in arkham and like like 
be ready because shit might get worse, I guess, was what she was implying. But I didn't really understand what the – because I didn't even know who the fucking gold mask guy was. I didn't know who that was. Yeah, I was yeah, curious about I. that. I, had to look that, I looked it up after the fact and then realized, like, oh, that's that's why. Okay. Because he gave a speech. You know you know about this, right? Mm. No? <laughs> Maybe not. He's, he's Psycho Pirate? Oh, yeah, no, no idea. Oh. Psycho Pirate, I think, is the is the going to be probably the main antagonist in the next crossover. Oh, because he's okay. like the he's like the uh, the Silver Surfer of this kind of. Oh, the Herald as as he's it the were. Herald of the Anti Monitor, essentially. So sweet, man. So then we get the coming in twenty nineteen fall which... twenty nineteen. Crisis on Infinite Earths. Four words rocked my world. Cannot wait. They tease a little bit of Crisis on Infinite Earths in a different way this season, though. Mm -hmm. Because Barry and and, and, and Supergirl, that is still their fate. It has just been delayed. Inevitably. We'll get into this later, because I don't know if they're going to be able to do it the way of the comics. Or at least have to be interesting. Well, yeah, you know that they're going to have to adjust the source material in some regard. But anyways, I don't want to take the forefront and talk this whole fucking right. episode. I did my brief synopsis <laughs> yes, of all the episodes. Now let's um, uh, let's roll this thing back. I'll take I'll take the reins here. I think the first thing that kind of caught my attention with how much fan service and nostalgia feel is going to be is when they're going to go to Earth thirty eight and it cuts to the Smallville intro. With the freaking Somebody Save Me song. I was like, oh god, what's happening? And then it goes right to the like the same farm from the show. And it's like, oh, good, it's not Tom Welling. That's that's nice. Okay. <laughs> like, you don't like my, Tom Welling? I don't I just I don't want it to be so much connective tissue to the old show. Got you. It's cool that it's got some references and it makes sense that it's similar. Right. But it doesn't have to be exactly the same because we're dealing with alternate universes, and I love that that's how they keep playing on this, that these are alternate versions thereof. That's why there's some stuff in Arkham. We see, I just want to call it out, the Dark Knight Rises Bane mask. Oh, I yes. saw that. I was, like, yeah. I was like, what the hell is that doing? <clears throat> yeah. Uh, no kidding. I, just, I would have loved to see a like, Gotham shout out. Like, just have a... Just one of their characters, like, just... Like, is that... Is that Edward Nygma from Gotham? What the hell? It, <laughs> just like... I think I think the best person to take from that universe that could have been plopped in here just briefly would have been Barbara. Oh yeah, I think I... that just her being a total badass, but not sure, like may, even making her confusing herself, and and she feels totally isolated. It could have been it could have been a whole lot of different things. But yeah, that's all. But I it, it was it was definitely there was so much fan service, especially in like the first that first one just with the. Uh, with who they brought out with all the Smallville stuff and bringing it out. And then I think the next one, I think was the beginning of the second episode when we saw, uh, Barry Allen from earth 90 or yeah. 91. I don't know if it, I don't know what they called it. Oh yeah. Caitlin. And, um, who is it? Caitlin and Felicity. Yeah. Make that like rod, the magnet rod. To mm-hmm. pull him through, and he's like almost again callback and a little bit of a subtle reference to Crisis on Infinite Earths, and now Batman versus Superman: Dawn of Justice. Yeah, Barry's almost coming through, but can't quite, and we don't really get the full message. But he does get enough out to say, if you open the book, you can set everything right. That's all right. he really gets to them. So now they're in this like, what the fudge, noodles? Yeah, I was, I was, I got the Batman because I have not read the in- Crisis on Infinite Earths book i need to i have it i just need to dive into it but and then i loved that uh there was a, a green lantern tease in the crossover as well say what did you miss the green lantern tease really i i did i actually missed it when um when earth 90 barry allen comes out he said john john where's your ring Oh, that was what he was uh, referencing. Because oh. John Diggle is potentially John Stewart on Earth ninety. That makes amazing amounts of sense. Interesting. Yeah. Shit. I, I like how they're 
they're all like Jay, and he's like, no, Barry. <laughs> Dad, no. Dad. No. Yep. no. Yeah, I, the one thing that really bummed me out is that he didn't have a whole lot to do. Like he was out, and then all of a sudden, like two seconds into him, like all right, he's gonna fight, and then just just Mo- dusted monitor him. was just doesn't more ex- powerful. I mean, doesn't explain where he goes at all either. Well, no, Monitor just kind of dusted him to ba- probably back to his reality is what I would assume. Right, yeah. the one he just left you know, devastated in the beginning. Yeah. Which also uh, showed the green arrow from Smallville, or the green arrow costume from Smallville. Really? Yeah. The, one Man, of the, one I, of the, there was a ton of just costumed bodies on the ground. They're like, yeah, I know who that yeah. is. Is that Adam? That looks like Adam. What's, I don't know. That's, Man, I need to go back and actually rewatch that uh, again. Again, I was smashing through all this, guys. So it yeah, you were you were burning through. You were just like, no gaps, no chance to digest. I saw the hot guy costume. Oh yeah, they had the helmet too, didn't they? Yeah. Oh my gosh, that. there's something we need to mention that was at what Wayne up? Manor. Dude. It is I, a, a must reference Easter egg. The bust from '66 Batman that got him into the Batcave. Absolutely. Yeah. <clears throat> I saw that and immediately marked down. I was like, oh, no fucking way. Oh, yeah, we, there was a lot, especially once we got to the Arctic, there was so much Batman. Like, obviously, we talked about the Bane mask. You saw uh, yeah. the freeze gun. That actually got to see that versus Caitlyn, which I think was the worst was to hit that with the freeze gun. Like, what the fuck are you trying to do? Like <laughs> Dude, I kind of thought she was going to absorb the freeze power and, like, ultra shock her back, but that is not necessarily what happens. No. No. Uh, Not at all. I don't know. What was, uh, Dick, what was your standout moment? Um, my standout moment. So, uh, as a whole, this saying didn't quite hit me as hard as, uh, Crisis on Earth X, or Earth... Yeah, yeah, Earth X. The so, last one. Uh, yeah, that that the last crossover was much more impactful in terms of like uh, characters and you know what yeah. happens to characters, uh, such as Professor Stein. Uh, yeah, but that I, is I think, true. I think the standout moment for me, my favorite moment, was when um, Barry and Oliver talk to the Monitor. Like mm-hmm. this is that this is the moment you realize oh. The monitor's not actually a bad guy. He's just trying to save everybody. Essentially, he's trying to find the pro- the right universe. I mean, yeah, he's going about it in kind of an asshole way, but that's what he has to do. Um, he's testing them. Yeah, he's just testing them, but nobody realizes that. Everybody's just like, "Ah, oh, fuck this guy. He's ruining everything." But he's really just not. <laughs> no. I think there's a moment for me that really stands out when we go and we have a a beautiful Easter egg that calls all the way back to the first time these two are Barry and Oliver Queen (laughs) at the at the farm, and and he says, "I want you to run as fast as you can at me, and I'm going to try to shoot this arrow." And Oliver goes, "Oh ha." You're funny. You thought you could trick me by putting the crossbows in the in the brush. I I, I know that trick. And he's like, no, I'm just trying to I'm not make you. you better, man. Like I'm not you. I'm not a spiteful dick. And then he was totally <laughs> spite arrow in the back. Wop. Like waiting four, four years, years to do that. It. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I love that part. That cracked me up. I think, what was Got the other... a good chuckle. The salmon ladder made it. Just like, can you take this seriously for? <laughs> I, mean, I could do this all day. This is awesome. Like, the uh, the salmon ladder has been a repeatedly used joke. <laughs> yeah, and I'm really, okay with sh- it. They shit on Green Arrow so much in this crossover. About <laughs> from like oh, when he came in, you have failed this city. I don't think that's your line. I don't. <laughs> when Cisco <laughs> says that, when he tries to stop him, just... watching Oliver as a f- he was a fish out of water, and I loved it. He Just him was, overshooting is marks every time he's trying to run to something. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, he was he was a fish out of water, and it was great to see him as comic relief. You oh. just missed the Ion building by 18 blocks, man. Get it together. <laughs> you know? <laughs> You're, what was it? Your adrenaline is off the charts. What is wrong with you? Because <laughs> he's still, like, super hyped up because he's Oliver. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my. 
Yeah, I just... Or it's just like, how Bear was all laughing about him, and it's like, I like to wake up in my own bed. You woke up next to Iris? We gotta change now! He was just... Yeah, I loved that too. He was immediately way more concerned after finding that out. Yeah. He's just like, okay, yeah, whatever. Wait, you did what? I mean, it is a CW show. It's not like she was dressed in anything less than fully clothed under there anyways. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I don't think she was even in bed. I think she was making breakfast. I think he woke up in an empty bed. Yeah, he did wake up in an empty bed, actually. I like that he still defended her cooking. It's like, oh, it's fine. No, it's we're good. It's, that's not the food. <laughs> He's still a married guy. He knows. He's still... Yeah, he gets it. He, gets it. he totally gets it. Oh, my God. Oh, I'm trying to think. There's so many good moments in this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I oh. think it's interesting to know as an outsider looking in, there's some stuff that definitely flies over my head that I was just like, oh, like the Brainiac thing is one of them. Had no yeah. idea who that is. Yeah, I'm just you, like, who you, is this guy? Yeah, the, some <clears> of the <throat> Supergirl characters are just like, it's like, oh, who's that guy? It's like, oh. And the fact that, like, I don't know where Lois Lane got a giant hammer from. I'm just like, she okay. got it from the Fortress of Solitude. Oh, okay. That's that's Ramon touches it. Cisco touches it. The fucking oh, yeah, yeah, scumbag right. Cisco. When they when they breach over there, and he's like, she's like, don't touch that. He's like, you could do some serious damage with this bad boy. Like that's right. <laughs> oh, yeah. I liked it at the very end that Clark as Superman was in there in front of like a charcoal grill. Doing like the very domestic look with like just mm-hmm. I don't even know what okay, he was doing. Okay, so I have a question. Yeah. What did Clark see that has made him decide he needs to propose to Lois now? Because something has changed. She had there's a look of on. there's a look of imminence in his eyes, and he was staring into that book for a long time. Yeah. He saw well, a lot of destiny and how things will play out regardless of if he can say anything. That's kind of his panic. Right. In that moment. So what did he see of Lois? What does he see coming? And what does he know he can't stop? Is the real genuine question I have for you guys. What do you think is coming? Maybe he mm. saw the crisis. Could have. Probably- I think that's a, that's a direct, sensible thought. Uh, my thought was, what if he saw Doomsday and it wasn't at all Lois that died? It was him. Mm. Ooh. Could have been. Ooh. Could have saw injustice. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> He's, he saw Batman v Superman: Dawn of Justice, and he was like, "Whoa!" I, I need to get, get out, the out of here. Fuck out of here. It's, I need to get. Oh out yeah, of here. and you guys probably had no idea what Argo was. Or you might have. No, no clue. No clue. idea. Uh, this shit. Argo was I like she said Argus actually. Oh, uh, I think last season on Supergirl. Um, there's a there was a remaining chunk of Krypton that still this is like Argo City, so it's in its own self-contained bubble. And Clark went there to kind of bond with his roots, and he's taking Lois there just to show her the play. They, there was it was a big plot element last season because Kara's mom's still alive there and all that. Gotcha. Interesting. Yeah, I'm way out of the loop. Yeah, same. Yeah, it's it's all good. Supergirl's fine. It's just a it's a little. There's a lot of... Well, Super's always been a little metaphorical to the times we're in now. Just, like, aliens instead of, like... It's all immigration, but aliens instead of... Yeah. You got an alien president trying to build a wall around fucking some planet? I know, it's crazy. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. But, yeah, that... Actually, this season's actually pretty good, though. There's a... There's a villain that's kind of Trumpian... But a more likable per- person. <laughs> Ooh, weirder words have never been spoken. What Especially by fuck? me. We really are. We really are in Else Worlds. Holy shit. Yeah. I, a I mean, likable Trump. Well, his backstory like it makes a, sense. That's like a he's... polishable turd. And a it polishable just doesn't work. <laughs> it just oh, doesn't my... work. I don't. Know, it's it's a, he's an interesting character. It's uh, I don't know if he's ba- if he's comedy. He's like his name's Agent or uh, he's Agent Liberty. I don't know. It could be a Superman okay. villain or something. Okay. Okay. Do his big gold mask. I thought it was him at first. I was like, no, that's not right. But hmm. yeah, there's definitely yeah. There's I have a lot of there's a lot of for you guys. Yeah. 
Okay, and I, I this is where we can really let our our theories fly. What do you guys think? Who are the crossover people they introduce next year? Because listen, you've introduced Batwoman this season, and it was huge, which in turn introduced that Bruce Wayne now exists in the CW verse. It also in turn, as you said, introduces the fact that Green Lantern exists yeah. in the CW verse. If they are actually going Crisis on Infinite Earths, who all could they play with? Will they be playing with those people? I got to know what you guys think. Gotham's going to be done by summer of next year. They could get access to Batman. I don't know if they'll do it if they have Batwoman, but they might they might have the rest of the cavalcade they can play with the Batman characters. I don't know if they're going to actually have the bat, and here's my one thing. Titans just got the bat. Oh, Titans got the bat? He is in the finale. The finale is literally Batman versus Robin. Don't they have didn't they have two Robins in Titans too? Or did they show they two have- Titans? They have Dick Grayson Robin and Jason Todd Robin. Dick Grayson has left. Oh, shit. He has quit, and Jason Todd has just picked up the mantle of Robin. And he's actually, well, I can't spoil anything. That's for a whole other show. It's all done. You're going to have to give give me the rest of those episodes so I can burn it this winter. Burn through it. The Titans is the reason I'm not caught up on the CW-verse, because I've actually been dedicating time. I mean, I've... I will sit down with anybody and watch all ten episodes with them because it is that damn good. Like it is just... worth a massive one day if you have time to binge, watch it, and it will be the most unforgettable nine hours and thirty seven some odd minutes of your time. And Titans is also a Berlanti ver- or a Berlanti show. Yes, it is. So they could. A... I don't know if they play that card. They don't think they would put them in the crossover because it's a there's a paywall keeping you from some backstory. Uh, yeah, a little bit of a paywall keeping you from backstory, but also, and more importantly, the openness. You can, I don't think you can bring the Titans characters onto CWTV and have it make sense. If I don't hear Robin say, fuck you, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> and that's like his calling card in every episode. He's telling somebody to fuck you or fuck off. So Awesome. I mean, he he's pretty. And they don't beep it, man. They're pretty. I mean, they let well, it fly. They let their, fe- their freak flag fry, fly because, you know, it's their service. They can do whatever they yeah. want. Yeah, I have a feeling we're just going to end up with a Justice League. I would be kind of excited if they gave us a Green Lantern. Because I have a feeling the yeah. crossover, at least in my opinion, I think the crossover will end Arrow's run on the CW. They're going to take those characters and put them on other shows. But I think Air, like Stephen Amell is going to sacrifice himself to the monitor to for what he did in this crossover. That show's going to end and they're going to bring another show or some other team up to take on the rest of the season, but they're not going to reveal that until the crossover. What about another Arrow altogether? Connor Hawk, perhaps? We saw him in uh, Legends of Tomorrow. Arrow he does is, at some point pick up the mantle. That is true. And Arrow right now, since they're this season, since they're done with the flashbacks, are doing flash forwards. So you have mm-hmm. William grown mm-hmm. up, and you also have an adult, like a... A guy in his 40s. Well, you have a grown up uh, Arsenal. Yeah. Whoa. Whatever. So they could do some more with. They could do some more with that. I don't know how that this season's going to wrap up yet, but it's potentially could be another Green Arrow or another Arrow. They actually did show it. There is a a female Arrow that they've revealed on as the uh, the alternate. You're very behind on Arrow, so you would. But. Way so behind. I need to dedicate some time soon. You know, the holidays come up. There'll be some time during my holiday season where I can there do nothing. So. Especially now that Titans uh, is done for a bit. Well, no, it, Titans ends, if you're listening to Poor Entertainment today on Tuesday, Titans ends this Friday. The finale has not yet happened. Oh. Uh, I have so not this... seen the wrap-up. I am at the cliffhanger of the wrap-up, and I am ready to know what So the happens. cliffhanger is what revealed the bat. They've been playing Bruce cards all season long and candy trailing you that Batman and Robin had a genuine, heartfelt, friendship ending breakup. Oh, man. And they are not on the same page and something calls Dick home. And it's a deranged bat who's kind of lost sense of self is all I can say. Oh, yeah. I'm excited. Hmm. So essentially, the villain of Titans at the end of the season is going to be Batman. Just saying, I'll take it. Yeah, 
Uh, I think uh, they're. I don't know, Dick. What do you think they could take us in the next crossover? I, I'm really just excited for a, the folding to bring Supergirl's world into theirs because that's what happened in the crisis. It folded all the Earths really? together. Okay, that's how we got uh, to the more modern era of comics. Yeah. Okay. Was them because essentially what had happened if we're going and appealing the scenes way back for why Crisis was even written, Crisis was written with a genuine purpose. Take all of our canon, our Silver Age, our Golden Age at the time it was really the Modern Age, but now it's known as the Bronze Age, and as AP said, make them one, so that there was only one universe to talk about, one universe to deal with, no multiverse anymore. Everybody under the same banner. The comics were getting too for... convoluted, right? Wasn't that the problem? That no one could keep track of things as well? Well, at that point, you had to think. You had three technical versions of Good Guy Flash. Because you have Jake Garrick Golden Era Flash. You have Barry Allen Silver Era Flash. And then you also have Wally West Kid Flash, who then, based on what Barry does, picks up the mantle of The Flash. Right. So, the interesting thing here, too, and this is another thing that no one has said, and I'm, and I'm just... Uh, fingers crossed here yeah next year is crisis on infinite earths but that does not mean that it is the end of barry allen's story necessarily no i do like where you're looking at possibly oliver queen being done as a main character anyways and maybe they can find a way to repurpose him but uh i want to see them do the button on the cw and go the distance because now that you've introduced batman dick are you're looking confused like you're not sure of the button do you remember no. No, not at all? Okay. Nah. You got a lot of the pieces. I mean, you don't even have to zip the bat, but that's... Inferred. He's inferred at this point, right? Mm-hmm. We know Batman exists in this universe. Yeah. yeah. You have a Watchmen TV series coming out. On H- there's a, oh, there's the a lot button. of... The button. Yeah. The button, my dude. I thought the... you were talking like a button that you push. No. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I get, I get you now. Like the button. The button of buttons. That would be a tricky... Cr- That's a lot of playing with networks. Yeah, but I yeah. mean, at some point... Listen, you have to look at this long term. At some point, you know that DC Streaming Service, once it hits the number that they want, they will do much like what Disney and, the, and everybody else is... Pull everything. Is, it's going to get pulled. Things are going to change, and they're going to have an opportunity to really go forward. But you have to keep Grant Gustin at the helm there. Because to see Grant in his journey deal with the button, deal with the reverse flash storyline that the button... Can we keep Tom Cavanaugh as the reverse flash? Absolutely, you have to. And I mean, you can drive that story home. Hell, you could do a version of the button with Oliver Queen instead if you really need to. And that would be interesting. I mean, essentially is Batman. I mean, and it wouldn't quite be the same, but still, I think that's a totally amazing, underutilized storyline I need to see brought to that kind of medium. You better at least put it on the do it on the Watchmen side of things as a second season. Kick that off with the button. Oh, that would be wicked. That's a cool, interesting crossover. And then see the thing. I, and I wanted to talk about this too. It's funny because you've got Gotham that exists still as a show. Mm-hmm. Now the 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 CW verse has a version of Gotham City. You now have Titans that has a version of Gotham City. They aren't really being so secretive that all these multiverses exist, and that's how they get around it. What if Crisis on Infinite Earths is a way to can, like canonize everybody together somehow? Like, not directly at the front. It doesn't look like it at the front, but it just does enough to set us up to the future where it is possible for certain characters to cross over and so on. I like it. I, I You have me pumped. I mean, I'm just going to say this, and this is another theory I have. Gotham is ending this year, AP. You know this. Dick, mm-hmm. I'm not sure if you knew that. You probably they just did. Had, they I just I wrapped, uh, like, this past week. 100 episodes. So they uh, they ended exactly episode 100. I love that. That's super poetic and cool. Yeah. They did uh, 12 episodes or 10 episodes this season. It's, like, elongated, and every episode's a little bit longer, so it's, like, bigger in scope and scale. Less than a month uh, away. Less than a month away. We're only a few short weeks here. But the thing that I'm I'm kind of hinting at is when that show ends, you've got a DC streaming service to do whatever you want with. Make Gotham have a movie. And Give make it. that Batman year one. Gotham year one. And make put it. David Mezu in the Batsuit 100% locked in 
as your bat. I mean, you could even give it two years so he could mature just a little bit. I mean, he's what, like 17 now? Yeah. Give so or take. I mean, give, make, him years, 20, make him 20. Wait till he's that's 20. That's a perfect time to rock him out as that character. Mm-hmm. You know, so, and then to have that cast come back and, and to Jim Gordon that has a reason to have the mustache. There are ways that Gotham is not done, um, but that also harkens to me saying that there are ways that all these shows can combine, uh, just depending on what CW chooses right. to do, because I think Berlanti has his hands way deeper in this than we even realize. He's the Kevin Feige of the, of the DC TV universe. Fucking nailed it, bro. <laughs> Dead on. I mean, that's what they need. And or they could even do like a miniseries like uh, Disney's doing with uh, some of the movie characters. Give them like a five, six episode event to do yeah definitely i'll be fine with that i'm all about it do sign, do the sign me up do the ark of asylum story Ooh. now with the gotham talking. characters yep yep and really set the pace really make arkham shift mm-hmm. oh ho, ho. i just want them to cast the guy that did the voice for jebediah arkham in the arkham games as jebediah arkham to narrate if they were to do that because his I'm voice sure is I'm, so <laughs> fucking creepy i'm sure he's he's got time <laughs> yeah i mean sure I'm, I'm just guessing uh i love these crossovers guys it's a fun excuse to talk to each other definitely i the only thing that i don't like this about this crossover is that it did button up too clean like i know they have to go back to status quo so people who don't keep up with other shows don't miss something monumental but it's always like some of those other events where it's like and everyone happens everything was everyone was happily ever after that's back. what we call a comic book ending ap because right. at some point your comic stories and this is classic um what you know the way it used to be you button your story up nicely to make readers happy and then tease something else bad coming and they gave us just like a kernel of that tease with batwoman of course you guys know next year she is going to have her own show. Sweet. Could you could could roll it into the arrow slot? Like I'm saying, makes sense. Or It'd be a totally different thing. Ruby Rose brings a different demographic, and I she mean, was totally badass and believable as Kate Kane. Yeah, CW, they've already extended another day of show. Like another, they do Sunday through Thursday now, so they're they're primed and ready. And I I still don't know how much more Legends Legends is fun, but it's. It's a lot of the same, but I do like the Constantine stuff. He's he's good on that new season. I don't know if either of you guys are watching Legends. Way behind I, on Legends. I stopped watching it after a few episodes. I just I couldn't handle the ridiculousness of this season. It's, it's just it's, too it's, much for me. It's all it's way it's a lot more out there than the previous seasons. That's probably a part of the reason why they weren't included in the crossover. That and you had to make room for Batwoman. Yeah, they they chose they definitely limited the amount of supporting characters from all those shows. Like you've got the sciencey people around, but like, um, what was it? Uh, I always forget who he is. Uh, not Plastic Man. Um, the Elongated Man was a little bit at the beginning. They really didn't. They showed him punching the dude out, and then punch Ralph a- Digby yeah. did uh, Dibney. Dibney. Dibney, Dibney, Ralph Dibney, my bad, Digby, my bad. This new Identity Crisis is a crossover. Would be awesome. Be dark, but it would be good. I just, I just read that recently. It's a, it's a hell of a story. Yeah, uh, I think that uh, I had, I had, I had a point. I was going somewhere, and I just totally biffed it. I don't know. Lost it. I'm it's so, it's so amazing they they're able to put pull these off these kind of crossovers <laughs> on like an annual basis and just let it get bigger. I remembered what I was gonna say. Where the hell is Nora Allen? Why is she not yeah. helping Team Flash? Yeah, yeah that no was weird. Why they didn't show her at all in the crossover? Like they, I liked like her in the. She, like she, I I haven't seen any of her other than the teaser we got last year. But I yeah, would well, assume she stuck around. She's she's based on in, that intro. Yeah, she's big in the whole season, but not in. Was not in the crossover for some reason. I don't know why they chose not. Maybe just to have. Because I where think was they may, when? maybe they maybe they would have had to have cast a different person to play her because of the love child of Iris and Oliver Queen would have to be a, a different looking child. Maybe. Oh. Maybe I don't know. That's a, that's okay. the only. 
I mean, I'm not against that theory. But they could, but they, but we would have if they just said she was the daughter. They could have suspended disbelief. No one's really going to care. Still a yeah. white guy. It's still gonna. <laughs> yeah, we're we're totally going to buy in on it. Uh, no, but it's just like uh, also where is when? Oh, when left uh, Supergirl last season at the finale. He went, with, he, he went off. He, he got replaced. Brainiac uh, 5 came to replace him because they sent Wind to the Future with the. Uh, not the Legend of Tomorrow. The. Uh, what was that group called? Justice League of America? No, it was the one that uh, Monel was a part of that he formed in the future. Oh, 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 oh. That's. Um, 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 they have the rings. The yeah. Legion of Superheroes. Yes. So he went to the, the future with the Legion of Superheroes because of uh, whatever the events in the finale of Supergirl last season. See, so I'm when... so far behind. Shit. Yeah. So that's why he wasn't around. Okay. All right. yeah, they've, done, they've done a lot of interesting. I think like Supergirl was the one that's had the most changes. Yeah, they all kind of had their own stuff. <laughs> I just wonder if they're going to fold that Black Lightning into the in yeah. Crisis. That that show that doesn't I don't think can work as a crossover because it exists in a world without superheroes except for the ones caused by this experimentation. Uh they're still in a different pocket universe and Crisis on Infinite Earths is coming. Yeah, I'm just saying. Don't, yeah. Cuz that would change the status quo of Black Lightning. That's a, actually a good thing to mention AP. If you include the other heroes that exist in our CW verse and make them known to the Black Lightning cast, it would change that show's whole status quo. It would that affect their world and give them a whole season of plot to deal with the fallout of this change. That is true. That 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 show is one I'm not caught up on this season. It's just it's a it's a heavy show to watch because it deals with a lot of racial stuff as much as superhero stuff. So damn, yeah, it's. It's like Luke Cage. Luke Cage was kind of the same way. At least yeah. Luke. Yeah. I don't know. I'm really curious to see where the where this next show is, or how this what we're gonna see because we're gonna have to have some big finales this end of this season because mm-hmm. now cause I know Nate's has to go back and get caught up on all the rest of the CW. Before... I'm going to be a very busy boy. You're gonna be. A... You have to, Especially uh, with Game of Thrones coming back this spring. Oh, uh, yeah. Still in season five. My goals get caught up by the time the new season comes out. Catch up, AP. You're I fucking know. slacking, bro. I got season five on Blu-ray chilling to burn through as soon as Here's this the wedding deal. stuff is dying down. W- once your wedding is done, because that's the big focus here in a whopping. <laughs> as we listen, we're, what, ten days away? Nine days, yeah. ten days? So oh, man. you're yeah. on the cusp here, bro. You're, You're on there. the cusp of marriage. Yes. You're going to be marriaged soon. Mm-hmm. Once that's done, you and me are trading, though. You're going to catch up on Thrones. I'll catch up on the CW, and all will be right with the world. Hopefully, we can appease the monitor and set everything in Elseworld back to normal and get back to our lives as they were before yes. I was trapped in the stasis cube. Yes, appease me. I need to go back to <laughs> I need to go back to Earth thirty eight and hang out with Seth Rogan and Mr. Dog. It was a great time. Yeah. Dick, what do you have to catch up on? Are you behind on anything? Uh Legend, Supergirl, I need one more episode of Walking Dead. Um On the new I've, season or the last season? Uh which On which Walking show? Dead. Walking Dead, the current season. Uh oh, I need to catch yeah. up to the uh mid season finale. I just have one episode. Uh and it's it apparently is like going way off the rails in terms of the source material, um, which I'm I'm kind of starting to get out of it too. No, I'm, I'm, so. seeing, I'm just seeing Nate get ready. To like he wants to just <laughs> release a big rant right now. Don't I do already it. did you guys? Don't no, do I don't have to. You did on I KFC did it last week, I think. Was it last in the week? middle of the fucking episode? I broke it down because I was angry about it. It doesn't make any sense. I don't need to go in and do it here. We'll yeah, save it. true. Um, yeah. I, I'm still. I have a few episodes left of Ozark on Netflix. Oh, I'm, uh, I'm excited to watch excellent that. Excellent series. It's it's basically a, a much more slow version of Breaking Bad. Ooh, I like that. Uh, it um, Jason Bateman. Walter also. White with cancer, ten times slower death. <laughs> <laughs> no cancer, no cancer. At least not with the main character. Uh, more cancer. Excellent show though. 
It's a show that Tyler will actually watch because he doesn't worry about his favorite actor. Oh, I, no, not at all. <laughs> hey, speaking of this, so uh, we went and saw Creed 2. Yeah. And we saw a trailer for a movie. Yeah. This movie, the two main characters Brian are Cranston played. And Kevin. <laughs> yes. They're played by two people that Tyler absolutely hates. Brian Who is it? Cranston okay. and Kevin Hart. He, after the trailer was over, he looked at me and says, I know you're going to give me shit for this, but, and, but this is the only time you're going to hear me say this. That actually looks good. <laughs> the movie we'll did change look good. you someday, Tyler. It did look interesting. It, it does look good. That. It does look good. I'll, I'll go see it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm hoping to see Into the Spider-Verse this weekend or this Saw week. Saw it last week or over the weekend. It was great. Uh, I'm also looking forward to seeing Aquaman here soon. Yeah. Uh, uh, hopefully, three days hopefully away? both in the next yeah. week. Yeah. And that might be the last uh, one I see before the wedding. So, Dick, if I don't get to see Aquaman, I might request you do a really in uh, some form of review for JIC as a, as a crossover thing because – we could probably. Do I don't that. know if I'm. I don't know if I'm gonna get to see that, you guys. I got lots of shit coming up in the next like couple days. We actually have a show on Thursday. Show on a Thursday. Who booked that? Oh, I did. Shit. <laughs> Bands don't rest. Dick hey, was in a band. Chips did it. Dick, Dick learns it? again. Dick learns again. He's picking up the cards again and relearning the trade. So. Uh, I saw his helmet in a helmet. I'm like, I don't know what Dick's doing these days. He's doing something. <laughs> Dick hops. <laughs> oh, gosh. I don't Isn't know. That... Let's, uh, let's take this home. I think we're <laughs> we're getting a little off topic. I'm sure this will be covered on Podcastrophy tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. More than you, likely. You better address Dick hops. What, what, Dick hops? Yeah, yep. what, are, what are Dick hops? Like, what, what's going on here? Dude. You only have one leg. Where does the one legged oh, blonde dick, work? That, I hop. That dick fucking hops. video. Or that, that photo. It's late. Oh, I've been God. up since 4 a.m. Uh, working late all, or working early all week. Well, what I've been doing is I've been getting up at 4 a.m. and going to the gym before work. And then I go into work early. And then today I also happen to work 10 hours. Oof. I, so I'm I'm filling in for my team leader. So I'm supposed to be offline, but we had five people call in on the other team. So I had to go to those teams instead of focus on my team. Damn, it's frustrating because we no longer have Rolo at work. Oh, that thing happened. Okay, kind of. Uh, okay, well we can talk about that off air. Anyways, AP, back to it. Yeah, I think that'll do it for Porn Entertainment this week. This is definitely a very TV-filled, not really news-filled, but still a great crossover discussion. Thank you, Dick. Thank you, Nate, for joining me on this yeah, Elseworlds no event. Thank we'll you for finally it. having me on the Poor Entertainment. Yeah, I have to have you on Poor News soon, too. But we'll we'll figure that out at a different time. But yeah, I think that'll do it. Thank you, guys. I will talk to everyone, all of my listeners soon. You can definitely check us out. On the Dream the Comics Network, you can check out Podcastrophy, where Podcastrophy is sold. So definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah, go ahead and check out Podcastrophy live every Tuesday on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch now uh, on all the Podcastrophy things. You just look up Podcastrophy on those things. Yeah. Do that. Sweet. Subscribe to us. Subscribe yes. to us on all iTunes, right, so... Podbean. Yes, that'll do it. I'll talk to you all soon. That'll do it for Porn Hammer for this week. Bye, guys. Bye. Later.